All right, Atlanta Police Department. Earlier suggestions that multiple officers from each zone had walked off the job were inaccurate. The department is experiencing a higher than usual number of call-outs with the incoming shift. We have enough resources to maintain operations and remain able to respond to incidents. LOL, we can literally listen to the police scanners in Zone 6 is radio silent. Zone 5 is close to that. Go boys in blue. Y'all should have done this a long time ago. Hello everybody, I am The Last Raider. We're here with a video. Today we're not talking about entertainment because this is dominating so much of the news. I It is hard for me to come up with things that I need to talk about. So today we're going to talk about this. Uh, this was just breaking and I thought I need to get on this, you know, put my two cents on it. So, Atlanta PD just apparently has walked out of certain, certain zones of it have just completely abandoned their posts. They're, they're walking out, they're going on strike. And let me say, bravo, bravo to you guys. Um, I was talking about this earlier, you know, uh, with my dad and we were sitting there saying, I said, you know, it, it comes down to a point. I said, they're blaming all the cops for this nonsense. There will come a point in time where if these cops ever have enough and they up and leave, you're going to see all these Democrats suddenly get very, very nervous. You're going to see these liberal nitwits who are in charge of entire cities suddenly start freaking out because now, now their police protection is gone. And I couldn't be happier about this because for those of you who don't know, I'm a big Second Amendment advocate. I am a Second Amendment absolutist. If I want to go out and buy an MI-35 attack helicopter armed with a 60 millimeter Bofors gun on the nose and several Hellfire missiles from the U.S. military and a heat and about eight heat-seeking miss heat-seeking surface-to-air or air-to-air missiles mounted to the mounted on the wings and everything, and have a couple of Dylan miniguns mounted to the side of the aircraft. There should be only one thing that gets in my way, and that is price. The reason you have these nitwit liberals go out there and claim gun control is they always say the same thing. Oh, you can call your cops, and the police will be there in 35 minutes. Well, now you bastards sitting in your little gated communities and ivory towers get to see what the rest of us are feeling like. You know, the working class citizens that go out there work a nine-to-five job and provide for a family, the ones that are not going out there who have a job where you sit on your ass and fuck with everybody's lives. Yeah, I have a very low opinion of people in government. <laughs> All right? But I've, I've had situations with the cops. In fact, I've been pulled over multiple times. I've had good situations with the cops. I've had bad situations with the cops. Uh, I had one cop one time who pulled me over, and because my tags were out on my vehicle... First time they were out, told him I didn't know what I didn't know they were out. I replaced the license plate, but I had forgot to ask for tags while I was in there. And so they didn't. It was the tags were supposed to come in. I think it was, I think it was the license plate was due. To, no, no, no. It was my driver's license. I had to renew my driver's license, and I didn't renew the tags on the vehicle on my truck. And so then I'm sitting there. You know, I, I drove for about a month. With uh, with expired tags, and I I didn't know. Well, like I said, it was the first time I had to replace anything. Uh, it was the first time I had to go get a new license, and I completely forgot. I or it, at least I it wasn't something that registered on me that I had to mess with tags. It was something I was told, but it, it's like your first time. Okay, your first time you. It's like it's like first time sex with a woman. You forget to play with her tits while you're sitting there you, when you're you're messing around. There are things that you're told to do. Or things that you've watched in pornos and you forget to do them. This was one of those things, okay? And basically, I got a smart ass police officer who told me, you know what, your record looks a little clean. I'm going to muck it up for you. And that was his reasoning, apparently, which I about come out of the vehicle. I about got myself shot in that point because I was pretty hot headed because it was like, you know, that was severely unfair, in my opinion. Uh, you could have just said, I can't let you go without tags. You could have been more tactical, tactile about it. Anyway, the guy ended up getting himself fired before it was over with. But you have this 
and and I've had I've had bad I've had bad situations. I've had good situations with the cops. I had one in particular where a police officer pulled me over, and I, I looked at him. and I said, "Dude, I gotta declare something." He goes, "What is that?" I said, uh, "I've got a forty-five strapped to my right hip and two extra magazines of uh, forty-five ACP strapped to the left hip." And he's like, uh, "You're not gonna shoot me, are you?" And I go. Well, that's not the plan. <laughs> so it's like, and we, you know, we, we went to the vehicle. We laughed. We chuckled about it. He asked me about my, my gun a couple times while, well, you know, interested in it, making small talk. And before it was over with, he looks at me and he says, look, um, I could give you a tick. I have to give you a ticket because I've pulled you over for your tags being out. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not going to give you a ticket for your tags. I have to give you a ticket, but I'll give you a ticket for not having your insurance, you just go to the judge, prove to him that you have insurance and he'll annul the ticket. And it, you'll probably just have to pay a court cost. Ended up, I got done. I didn't have to pay the court cost, which was, you know, in my opinion, that was amazing. That was awesome. Yeah. My phone's a little low on power. Cause I have yet to plug, I usually plug my phone up at the end of the day. Uh, putting on this brightness usually runs it down, but like I said, I've had good experiences. I've had bad experiences with cops. All right. There's more often than not, I've probably been pulled over 30 times in my lifetime because I, I use, I'm not someone who is perfect. I am someone who knows how far I can push the law. And sometimes I, I end up crossing the line and getting caught. Okay. Nothing, nothing severely illegal. You know, I just know how far I can push the speed limit and things like that. But when you've got, when you're doing a job and someone comes in there and they're just hammering you about the job all the time. I remember we had this dude, we worked, I, I worked for a guy one time that just kept hammering this one guy on the job, kept hammering him, kept hammering him about everything. Nothing he did was good enough. And finally the dude just turned around, looked at him. He said, you know what? Fuck you. I quit. I don't even want my paycheck. And he walked off the job after that. The guy that we were working for, because I was working subcontract for a carpenter at that time, takes off the job that day because we need four guys operating, and one of them walked off, and because we've got only three guys, two guys can be doing specific jobs. I think we were putting beams up inside of a house, and we needed one, we needed, uh, we were putting the beams up, and you needed almost four guys to hold it in place, while two guys at one end would hold and shoot the beam in, you know, it was a fake beam, but it was solid piece lumber. And so he'd have to shoot it in while the two at the other end would hold it. So you could keep everything aligned in the room. Sometimes you have to do some really interesting engineering feats. I'd have engineered my way around it, but this guy, he needed a lesson. So he went off and started begging that guy to come back, which is what these Democrats going to do. But what what has happened now is they're going to get a taste. We we've had this. We I've and I've been seeing this. I've been saying this to everyone. And I'm going to say it now on my channel. You're going to see a massive uptick in self defense. You're going to see a massive boost in uh, just regular things. Respect to the police because the the one thing that makes people respectful. I tell people all the time. Sometimes the best thing you can do in a situation is just walk away. Walk away and let that person fall flat on their face. Uh, are people going to die in this? Yeah. Are women going to get raped? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm not even saying it's a possibility. I'm saying you're going to have probably several hundred rapes in Atlanta before this is over with. Any city that does this, I'm going to say is going to have a minimum of 100 women raped. And the rapist is probably going to get away. Do I agree with that? No. Do I think it probably needs to happen? I wish it didn't. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. You're going to sit there and go after the police department whose job is to enforce law. Okay? And you decide you don't want law no more. Well, congratulations. Because you end up with Negan. Y'all know who Negan is from Walking Dead. And he's going to walk up there and then it's PP in your pants city day. Okay. Uh, these are going to be into it. It's like I've told other people, other people have asked me what would happen if, uh, I remember this one guy, we went over to, um, one of the lumber yards and he asked me across the counter he said, what are you going to do? 
if uh, our police officers quit. I looked at him. I said, "I guess the real question is, what are you going? What decision you're going to make?" And he goes, "What do you mean?" I said, "This old boy." I pointed to myself. I said, "This old boy, if the cops leave, is going to defend his family, and the only way I can defend my family is if I dominate." There will be people like me over there. There's going to be a guy not for power. They're not going to take over simply for power. They're not going to take over for anything selfish other than they want to protect their own. And if raising an army and putting a few people down defends your, lets your wife sleep soundly at night, she don't have to know all the monstrosities that I do in, afterward. I don't have to tell her. But my law enforcement agency isn't doing that because we're not sitting there, we're not fucking with them right now. In fact, the the police departments in Missouri have actually kind of been like, eh, it's COVID, we're not going to show up unless we have to. They've been pretty chill. Uh, even the highway patrol has been like, eh, we're not going to pull you over unless you're about to kill somebody. I mean, if you're like going super fast down the road, yeah, we're going to do something. Just just be common sense. We're just, you know, we're, we're not going to worry about taxes at this moment. Keeping people alive is more important right now. And uh, they, you know, they've kind of, now some of the cities are freaking out. But we're not having this massive, we're probably, if St. Louis does something stupid, which they're already doing stupid shit right now. But this whole thing with these two officers being charged with murder is just, is probably the straw that's going to break the camel's back. And you're going to see a lot of Democrats get real nervous because what this is going to do is it's going to expose them. Uh, it's exposing them as the racists that they are. It's also exposing them as people who just don't really care. They're not implementing policy that's going to make people's lives better. They're implementing policy based on politics. And just like comic books and movies, I know the channel's about this, I've got to put this in here at some point, but just like comic books and movies, these types of people don't do very good, they don't make very good government they don't make very good comics. They don't make good entertainment. Everything is based on political games, and it's not based on capital games. It's not based on let's make people richer. It's usually let's make people as poor as possible and as helpless as possible so that they'll be dependent on us like a drug dealer, basically. Um, they want you completely dependent on them. You see these idiots... That it's it's it kind of comes back to my earlier statement on the Second Amendment. Okay, you they don't want you to have a gun to protect your family with, but they've got no problem. Actually, I've got something better. I remember my dad one time was telling me because he did he did construction. He worked for a lot of um, lawyers and stuff. And there was a point in time where one lawyer, he in particular, my dad was working for him doing a complete remodel. And the old guy was doing a divorce case between this one young black girl and uh, her abusive husband. She was leaving him because he's beaten. He put her in a hospital one day with a broken arm and a busted collarbone and I think a broken jaw. She had to have her jaw wired shut for a while. She finally got up enough nerve to leave this guy. Now, I'm not saying that everyone is, is awful. I'm saying this individual was a dirtbag. Individual. Key word. Individual. But, she came in, and at the time, Missouri's laws were really strict. Uh, to, to give you an example, we're almost better than Texas is in terms of carrying a gun. We used to be worse than California with a combination of federal and state laws that are not in effect anymore. And to get a gun in our state, just get a pistol. You had to get like a buyer's permit, go like a 15-day waiting period, yada, 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 and then you couldn't even carry the pistol with you while you're outside. It had to stay locked up at home and all this other nonsense. You couldn't carry a gun. You couldn't really get a permit. There was no concealed carry permits at the time. And so she comes in and asks, asks the lawyer, she said, can I get a gun for my protection? Is there any way I can carry it? And he's like, oh, no, no, you don't need it. And my dad mentioned, he said, I remember this woman being there. She asked for protection, and the lawyer said, we'll give you an ex parte. Ex parte, he won't, he, he won't be able to come within 100 feet of you. Let me explain what law is, folks, okay? Law is just a guideline for what you can and cannot do, all right? 
Just because the law says I'm not supposed to go over 55 does not mean I can't exceed it. Ultimately, it is my responsibility not to go over the speed limit. Just as it's my responsibility not to murder somebody. Okay? It's my decision. We should let a lot of people know. If you get into a fight with, if you get into an altercation with me and you walk away, it's because I'm allowing you to do it. Okay? Take the win. Take take the moment of, you know what? I have my life. Walk away. But most of these, but anyway, she gets done. He gives her an ex porte and she leaves. Well, dad tells me, he says, I come back and I look and he said, I see my, he said, I walk up there and one person, there's these gardeners sitting there working with this guy. He's a lawyer. He's rich as frick. And he's sitting there talking to these. He goes up to them like, "What are you talk? What are y'all doing?" They said, "Does this look like a bullet hole to you?" And they look over, and there's this bullet hole in the guy's screen. And you know, my dad's country boy. Okay, he sees it. It's a twenty-two cal. It's a twenty-two bullet. They start searching the house, and they find seven twenty-two bullet holes, just right through the house, like it was nothing. Full metal jackets, supersonics. Well, later on, the lawyer, he finds out what happened. It turns out the police decide that it might be, with lack of enough evidence, they believe it might be the estranged husband taking pot shots at the house, just decided to drive by and strafe it. Oh, you know, the lawyer up and asks my dad. He's getting nervous, smoking, just, I mean, just eating through cigarettes like you wouldn't believe. And my dad, you know, he comes up to my dad and he's like, do you think he was trying to kill me? My dad said, no, 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 he's not trying to kill you. He said, nobody in their right mind would try to kill you by shooting a whole bunch of bullets. He said, he'd be pretty dang stupid. He said, you're, you're involved in this divorce case. You're about to ruin, you're about to wreck his life. You need to probably consider some security or some nonsense like that. And the old guy, the lawyer, he says, well, if he comes and, and tries to kill me, they said, uh, how do you think he'd do it? And of course, you know, my dad sits there, you know, random problem comes into the mind. Would I ever, if I had to deal with a problem, how would I deal with it? Let's put it like that. We'll come up with an ingenuitive way of doing that. And he basically explains to him, my dad basically explains to him how he'd kill the lawyer if it was him. Uh, and, and short, Long story short, on that aspect, the lawyer looks at my dad and says, if anything happens, I'll be ready for him. I just got this today. Reached into his pocket and pulled out a pocket thirty-eight revolver. And my dad cussed him up one side down the other. Because that lawyer had told that, told that one black chick that she did not need a gun and gave her a piece of paper to hide behind. Which is not going to stop bullets. <laughs> okay? The exporte is not bulletproof, ladies. Alright? You really need to think about it. But this is the mentality of the left a lot of times and a lot of your elites in these cities. They do not want you to have a gun, but hell, they're, they get their hide in the game. They want something. Well, now the police have walked out and they ain't got nobody now. Let them walk. In fact, cops should not come back. In my opinion, the cops should not come back until... Uh, hey, we're doing this now. Hang on a sec. We're done. Sorry about the screen, folks. My power has reached a point. I've talked too long. By the way, in my opinion, the cops should not return to their job until the civilians have free access to guns again. And a lot of this, you know, every time for gun safety gets kicked out, make the police officers' lives a lot easier by giving the people the ability to have guns. Because here's the thing. By the time you people let them back in, most of the liberals going to be, most of your voting base is going to be armed anyway. Anywho, folks, I am the last raider running out of power. Got to plug this phone up. <laughs> Sorry about this. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit me with a like. Comments on how you feel about the police department in Atlanta leaving and any more cops. I don't think that police departments who are being respected by the city and by the leadership and by the people should strike. I think they should reward those people, those communities, reward those cities, reward those towns. There's no need for you to walk out. But at the same time, do not send police officers to the to Atlanta. Do not send police officers in any, any place that has to have a strike. Do not go in there and support. And also, to National Guard members, 
I wouldn't support them either. All right? Because they up in St. Louis, our, our National Guard went in there and effectively put down the riot within about two or three hours. They had loot, They had almost all the looters captured. And uh, the uh, prosecutor in the area just up in, in St. Louis County just up and let them all go. In my opinion, the National Guard just shouldn't go back no more because they're just wasting time, energy, and resources. But anyway, folks... If you're new to the channel, be sure to uh, subscribe and hit the bell for notification. And as always, be safe, stay frosty, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye now.